I have the greatest respect for anyone who does talk radio. The greatest respect. Having done it myself, um, it's not an easy gig to do. Uh, you know. With regards to community and commercial licenses and the sort of relationship between the two, how how important do you think community radio will continue to be within within our societies? Like, I mean, as I said, back in the day, radio was everything. Radio was your friend and it was also the, the only source of entertainment and information. Um, now people have a lot more options. And so how do you think that will be affecting our industry going forward? I think it's a big conversation being had. Well, um, we've mentioned Bok Radio. Uh, the other one that I would highlight is Hot when it was yeah. 91.9. Um, they were phenomenal. I mean, where do you see a commercial radio station that has a, a uh, you know, when you land at an airport that has banners all over the place? So, but the great thing about it is um, they. the thing about community radio is that it is community. It's got to be community. It's got to be in touch. But also commercial radio needs to do that as well. The, the, the split between the two is that um, ostensibly, you know, commercial radio can sell advertising and can, um, you know, uh, get revenue from that. Once again, we go back to regulation in South Africa. Community radio is not supposed to sell advertising. But how do they survive if they don't? They've got to go to um, their community, their businesses, but that limits them, as does their transmission uh, radius. Um, it, it does work in some instances. I know that Fine Music Radio in Cape Town have got a big subscription base of businesses and um, private, uh, you know, private individuals who fund them. So. As your question is, you know, I mean, I, I can see it will never come together to a point where, you know, you have commercial and uh, but the but the line will be blurred. And this is where the the governing controlling bodies need to need to be sharp and on the feet. Um, the, the line will be blurred eventually, because with the Internet, you say community radio. I mean, community radio has access to the world. Yeah, as well no, as the does. community. It does. And I think with online has also been a big contributor to that. And Bok is, is one of the stations really capitalizing on the online sphere right now. And but, but again, you know, I think when 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 one starts to look away from FM, which because, like you said, being geographically bound to how as far as your transmitter can go, can sometimes be a handicap. Um, but when you go onto the online sphere, I think a lot of maybe just for now, a lot of. Um, not quality is lost, but I think you lose a bit of your audience. People trust radio. And I think online, people don't know that they can trust online as well. Cliff Central's one, st obviously, platform that's proved us all wrong. And they've just, he's built a great thing there. Um, but it's not radio. You know, it's it's completely different to what traditional radio would be considered. So I think, you know, that's that's where my curiosity lies, is, is this massive migration from FM to online and whether stations will be able to retain that interest when they're competing up literally. Because like you said, they've now got access to a global market, but so does everybody else. And everybody's now got the freedom of choice to choose any content they like. And I think community radio will have the challenge of convincing people that they are still the best for content that is relevant to their listener. Yeah, I always look at um, the app Radio Garden, and uh, <clears throat> it's my favorite app. And, you know, you spin that that globe that they have on there with all the green dots. And those are all radio stations. And they're radio stations that they, they are either streaming or they're community or they're full-on commercial. You know, you go from the BBC to the littlest uh, uh, streaming uh, online station <clears throat> somewhere in Jakarta or whatever, you know, but they're all there. Um, so, yes, that's what they – and, and when, when I try and mentor people and say – you know, talk to them about being on the radio. I, I often cite Radio Garden. I, I often tell them to download it and spin that globe and look at those green dots. And one of my um, uh, uh, sayings is, imagine you're one of those little green dots. What are you bringing to the table? What are you bringing to the microphone to distinguish you from what all those millions of green dots? You've got to have something that's going to make you stand out. With regards to the listener, and the listener changing over years, <clears throat> I think, especially with stations that have been around for, for a lot longer. I worked for Ekuruleni FM 
now for, for a while. Um, I was there for the better part of five years with a short break in between. And that was a, a way of, that's where I learned everything about what community radio is, to be honest, because they, they're 26 years old this year. And I think what I saw there was that a recipe does need to adjust ever so often. And that can be a very tricky thing, uh, adjusting that recipe to keep up with your listener. And, and, and again, the, it, it's, it's a lot of community stations, I think, struggle with figuring out who is that listener and, and how are they changing? Because, as you know, market research takes resources and it's very expensive, especially if you do it properly. And I've spoken to more than one station where I get the feeling that they struggle to identify exactly where, they're, where they are in their markets and who they're catering to. Because Rams, obviously Rams under huge debate, you know, and again, I'm not here to slam systems. I don't, it is the system right now. Rams is what we've got right now. And it's what we have to use. As far as I know, by law, stations must, must use their Rams um, when selling, which can, which isn't always great, but how else do you think they can go about, about um, targeting their listener and, and, and identifying their listener? Well, you know, you have the facility now, you've got a lot of um, online facilities, you have apps and you've got WhatsApp and that kind of thing. And the interesting thing is, you talk about RAMs and the BRCs, um, it's always been it's always been a subject of debate. You know, when you when you have uh, very high listenership figures, you're riding the crest of the wave and you're, you're waving it to the, um, to the media and saying we've got X amount of listeners. Um, as soon as that drops, you either, and, and this, this is the terrible thing, sometimes they react to a drop and they, they act that on air talent, which I don't agree with because the, the, the methodology of the, uh, the Nielsen figures or whatever they, they, they're trying to do in South Africa, it's, it always goes back to South Africa, sadly, because we have some systems, but they're not 100% um, you know, uh, tangible as they are in other parts of the world. We adopt them and kind of cobble them together. And everyone says, oh, yeah, fine, you know. But at the end of the day, your media figures go to a, a media house who's selling advertising. They say, oh, that one's got 800,000 um, listeners, and we'll just put our ads on there. With no thought pattern um, of, is, is that the right audience? Yeah, You know, we're just looking at figures here. We're just slapping our product on there or our client's product. Um, so, yeah, they, 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 there's too much, as far as I'm concerned, there's too much credence put into, um, into listenership figures when stations have other alternatives to look at. They know if their WhatsApp lines are swamped, if their, uh, if their apps are uh, swamped with messages, if there's a response when they go to an OB and they're absolutely inundated, they know that that station is popular and their presenters are popular. And if at the end of the day, the BRC or Rams or whatever you want to call them show 3,000 um, listeners on there well you know that that's something wrong so yeah i mean i know you don't you said you don't want to to malign the the system but i'm afraid you have to in some cases no sure it's, uh, it's not that you know it's i guess and as i say the radio world is these are realities i suppose yeah it's not about um uh, um speaking ill of of rams or the brc you know i suppose it's just it's been it's been a topic of discussion everywhere i've been where 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 radio people come together very rarely but it happens you know i went to yeah. marula media did this really cool community radio conference one day and they had a bunch of community stations from all over the country congregate in it was in pretoria and how cool that was to hear different community stations discussing their, their obstacles and their challenges, but also the things that make them successful and sharing that information. I don't think it's something that happens often enough. I think what's also changed is, is the style in which radio has been executed. Uh, radio was a lot more theatrical. It was almost more, I listened to some clips of John Burks the other day, and John Burks had this amazing you know, it boiled out of him. But I think the, the more recent trend I could be completely wrong about this, is to sound a lot more toned down, maybe a lot more natural, a lot more conversational. Would you say that the style of presenting of what would be considered good presenting has changed over time? Well, it has. You know, the, the, the essence of radio is that people want to be entertained. Um, they, you know, John Burks and uh, um, uh, Wackhead Simpson, I mean, with the prank calls, it, it's, it's marvellous to hear. Um, you can't run it 
you know, uh, you can't run it 24 seven. Um, so that's where you get a couple of, uh, you know, uh, hiccups there because you'll have maybe 10 minutes of great airtime and the rest of the three hours, what have you got there? So you've got to be able to be an all rounder. You've got to be able to deliver a, a show a well thought out show, a well prepared show, and you've got to be ready to think on your feet as well if something goes wrong, uh, or if something in the news breaks, or if something funny happens, you know. And this is where the radio has changed to a degree. Um, I remember, I remember at Magic, um, I, there was something that happened, and I, I wanted to do something, and they said, "Oh, you have to go through the." Um, the, the, you know, the program manager, you have to clear that first. And it was an instance that you can't clear it because if you get up from your seat and walk out of the studio and he's in a meeting and you know, all this, so they've got to have faith in, 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 in the presenters. Um, and you've got to believe in your presenter, you know, you've got to believe that they can do what you've hired them to do and, and, and carry it through the style of presentation well, it, it, it has changed. Um, remember as well, something that we haven't actually covered is you were talking about community and everything else. A lot of it is down to language. People love to listen to a radio station in their own language, and they, 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 they move towards that station because of it. Um, Afrikaans, Sutu, Zulu, whatever, English, whatever it is, you know. Um, so that plays a big factor as well in South Africa, having all the different languages we got. And, and, and in, in the different languages, there are different thought processes sometimes as, as to how people present. You know, the English presenters have a certain style. The Afrikaans guys do, you know. Uh, and also it depends what the brief is from the radio station. Yes. What are they, I'm you know, what are, what are they trying to be? I think very often, yeah, that the station will have an influence. But yes, it, it is interesting to know how how you know it's it's almost how cultural differences will determine how presenters because English people and and I know because I'm I'm Afrikaans, very uh, like uh, I was in Afrikaans high school, very Afrikaans, you know, and I but also being on English radio, and then you realize very quickly where the differences lie massively in what people find entertaining, what they find funny, what they find relatable. It's not the same at all. Um, and of course, with every other culture, I, I just, I know Afrikaans English, but I'm sure it's the very same thing when you are presenting in Zulu, some of the biggest stations in this country, Osa, it's, it must be different uh, because the audience is so different. You, you hear a lot of the just play the music, you know, radio is personality driven. You have to be very careful because if you remove the element of the air talent so much, you may as well give them a streaming, uh, give them a, um, a Spotify playlist. No, because, that's true. That you know, is true. Not radio. Um, yeah, no, and I can, I, can, I can definitely understand, you know, why you say that. I think also, because you, I know that you come from talk radio as well. A part of your career was spent in talk radio. And I, uh, so just to, again, just the other day, for the first time in my life, I was able to watch talk radio happening here at Cape Talk. They let me shadow. Um, which was like the coolest thing ever. So first of all, you walk into Prime Media and it's like La La Land. I don't know if you've seen the inside. It really the toys. is. There's so many toys and the place looks like a carnival. So yeah. I'm there and I'm just dumbfounded by this. Being a radio geek, this is really like putting me in Disneyland. And talk radio just blew my mind. Just the other day, I couldn't believe it, you know, and I was watching Lester Kievit's show and for three hours, not one song was played. Now, where I'm from, that's unheard of, right? I'm from music radio and you don't do that. <laughs> but it, and it's a different skill, I think. It's a daunting thing, turning on that mic, knowing that the next time it's going off is in three hours and you better be interesting. You better be informative. <laughs> you better be a lot of things. I have the greatest respect for anyone who does talk radio. The greatest respect. Having done it myself, um, it's not an easy gig to do, uh, you know, um, with, with the music radio, I always look at the, the commercials and the, which they do, I suppose, as well, uh, the commercials and the, and the music, especially as, as, as a, a safety net, if you like, uh, you know, if you, if you run out of things to say, if your mind drifts, you know. Um, you just hit play. Something to, if anything yeah. happens, just hit play. Yeah, but, but with... Um, I mean, I worked for 702 and I, I had a couple of um, I had a couple of shows. One was a Saturday afternoon 
uh, you know, towards evening. And I used to have to go into the one, the, the, the Prime Media and Santon and Joburg. And it was, they had a pub at the bottom, an Australian pub or something, I remember. And I'm going in there. And I could actually hear when there was a rugby game going on, I could hear them cheering at the bottom. I think, well, who's listening to me on the radio at the moment? But I was wading through things and I was bringing in guests just to pad this thing up, you know. And eventually, you know, if you get bored with yourself, you think, well, what am I going to talk about now? You know, you have in those days you had newspaper cuttings. I mean, it's probably easier now, you know, now that they have uh, access to Internet and stuff. But if, and if you don't get a response, I mean, you look at those lines and you go, Okay, that didn't get a response. Let's move on to something else. And you, you kind of, yeah, you, you can sink. I mean, I, I panicked a couple of times on talk radio. I can only imagine. I'm grateful. I had no one's let no one's let me do that just yet. So that's good for whoever's listening. Brian, I know I know that this meeting is actually going to end itself in a couple of minutes, but I, it's yep. been really nice to finally kind of chat with you in person because we've been communicating on email. I know when I was working in Joburg, we were communicating on email, but we've actually never yep. spoken. I'm glad we got to do this. All right. Good chatting to you, Barry. Okay. Thanks very much.